in our today's session, we will discuss about PMRP and LTP. Let's start with uh, PMRP first. So what is PMRP? Basically PMRP is nothing but it's a predictive material and resource planning. So what exactly PMRP does, we will discuss in detail about that. And then we will move ahead with the, what is there in long-term planning? What is the basic difference in both of the uh, planning functionalities? So basically that PMRP is a very fresh and new uh, uh, planning uh, methodology that SAP has given us in 1909, SAP Purhana 1909. So in earlier release of SAP Purhana or in uh, SAP ECC, we used to have a long-term planning, okay? So basically what PMRP does, PMRP actually helps the planner to identify the capacity issues and the possible solutions for the same. So based on the future demand, which we have given to the system, PMRP is the planning engine, is same like our uh, material requirement planning, MRP run. It helps uh, us to identify the capacity issues for incoming months. Let's say for us, uh, one year, if planner is doing the, you know, planning for next one year, and for a different month, we have a different number of, uh, number of pieces or num different demand, then this PMRP engine used to run the planning at a simulation mode, and it helps us to show at a simulation mode, is there any capacity constraint or is there any capacity issues for incoming months? So if you do understand, or if you do remember, the same kind of functionality is available there in SAP long-term planning also. So what is the advantage or what is the difference in this LTP, uh, sorry, PMRP that SAP offers here in 1909? That is in PMRP, it, it not only gives us, or it's not only help us to identify the capacity issues, but also it gives us the possible solutions for the same. So if you do remember in long-term planning, we are able to identify the capacity issues through different reports, okay? But the possible solutions that planner has to do a manual reconciliation or manual, uh, you know, uh, monitor of the reports. And from that, uh, planner has to identify the possible solutions. But here, PMRP engine helps us within a one Fury application, it helps us to give the possible solutions also. So that is very easy for planner to get prepared to take the decisions on the change conditions. Let's say for a specific material, if my demand is very high in a specific month, then PMRP engine propose the solution, either planner can change the demand and reduce the demand or Planner has an option to change the resource plan. That means if he is having multiple production line to produce it, uh, uh, PMRP engine will propose the solution to planner. Okay, if this demand is going high in this specific month. We can bifurcate in these two different lines. Also, if I don't have a, a different line to produce this, then PMRP engine could uh, you know, provide the solution for that specific high demand to do the pre-production. That means prior to this month, if there is an available capacity in that month, uh, planner can you know pull the planning or production and can produce this production in the prior to uh, pre-production or prior to this month, so that it will be helpful to fulfill the demand. If that option is also not av available, then capacity increase. That system will give an option to increase the capacity or change the capacity of that specific month by adding some extra line or increasing the machine with full volume or full speed, that kind of option that PMRP engine gives us. As we discussed in uh, SAP ECC or earlier SAP releases uh, in SAP S Purhana, we do have long-term planning that is used to simulate the material requirement planning, which also allow us to analyze the capacity results and capacity situations based on different reports, planner uh, can easily find out in which month there is a capacity constraint and based on that, uh, planner would be able to take the actions, okay? So basically what Fury application gives us here, in Fury application, uh, sorry, in PMRP, SAP gives us only two Fury applications, okay? One, that is to schedule a PMRP job in the background, that is same like our MRP. And the second one is process 
PMRP simulation. So this is the core application where planner can get all the information in a single screen. And it's very easy for planner to get prepared to take the decisions with respect to this kind of methods, like either planner can change the capacity or planner can do pre-production -pre or planner can change the source of supply. That means he can change the production version or production line and uh, try to fulfill the uh, uh, demand or change the future demand. This is the last option. If planner is changing the demand, let's say the demand is of thousand, but if we don't have uh, pre-production capacity available or uh, we don't have uh, uh, other production line to produce it, planner can change that 1000 to 800, but ultimately it will show us that how much percentage of fulfillment that we lost. Like the requirement is of 1000, but we are still producing only 800. That means we are reducing our performance. So that's how PMRP engine helps the planner to take a necessary action based on this PMRP run. Now we will discuss about long-term planning. As we said earlier in SAP, we do have that long-term planning functionality available. Let we will discuss about LTP and we'll try to find out what is the basic difference in PMRP and LTP. Now let's talk about long-term planning. Long-term planning in SAP is used to check the future demands at all bomb levels. Here we can check the current manufacturing capacity and vendor availability to provide the material in that specific period. So this is also the same like PMRP. This is also not the actual run. This is the simulation run, which system gives us the planning at a simulation mode, helps us to identify the capacity constraint and the same way planner will be able to uh, get prepared for the future uh, incoming months. So in LTP, we do have a different methods to simulate the planning for a future demand. Also to preview the capacity planning information also to preview the capacity planning cost, preview the purchasing information, and preview the inventory management. So this many information we can get through LTP. As of now, in uh, PMRP is a very new functionality and still SAP is working on that and maybe in coming releases we will get more, much more functionality get added like same like LTP. But as of now in P, uh, PMRP, we are able to see the capacity constraints and system also propose the solutions for that. Here in LTP, we do not get any proposal from the system. Only system gives us different reports where planner has to go monitor the report, identify the situation, and based on that, planner has to act in the real manufacturing run or in the real manufacturing process. But in PMRP, system gives us the proposal. That is the basic difference between LTP and PMRP. And that's why SAP recommending us to go ahead with PMRP is an advanced technology or advanced planning methodology where planner will get everything at a same single page and it's very easy for planner to take the decision. So basically in LTP, there are five major steps where planner has to create first planning scenario, then whatever demand for the future incoming year, which we have there in the system, that demand we need to you know, copy it to the uh, um, uh, inactive version, right? So that demand that defined forecast, uh, that once we copy it to the inactive version, we need to define the forecasted plan to that planning scenario. And based on that planning scenario, we need to do the simulation material requirement planning run. It's altogether different kind of planning run, same like MRP, same like PMRP, right? So we need to run this uh, simulation MRP run. Once it's done, system gives us the different kind of reports that planner has to analyze the report. And based on that, planner can easily transport the report results to the purchasing department, costing department uh, with the different information. So in SAP, we do have different transaction code to do it. By MS31, we are supposed to create the planning scenario. Then by uh, MD61, we used to you know, create the demand in the system. Then we need to copy that demand to the inactive version by MS64. Then we need to run the planning, uh, uh, long-term planning MRP run by MS01 by scheduling the background job. Once it's done, system gives us the different kind of reporting like MS04, uh, to understand the stock situation, then CM01 or CM38 to understand the capacity situation. Also, we do have a MCEC 
that is long term planning material analysis this kind of reports we will get from the system and that based on that report planner will take the action so if you look into the overall long term planning procedure is little lengthy and it's not that easy to understand and monitor all the reports what sap is providing and that is the reason now in sap s purhana sap came up with a fresh new technology that is pmrp and that is very much easy to do the planning and to take the action based on the result because we are getting everything in this one application in front of, at, at a single page now let's move ahead and we will discuss how actually the ltp and pmrp process works in the system let's talk about the basic uh, you know planning uh, pr production planning methodology where we used to create plan independent requirement first in the system by md61 transaction code right and then uh, we used to run the mrp i'll put uh, material requirement planning here like the mrp run by transaction code md01 now we do have md01n that is mrp live okay ultimately once mrp run happens for a system gives us the procurement proposals for uh, in house manufacturing material system create the plan orders right plan orders and for uh, externally procured material system create the purchase requisition purchase then ultimately this pr will get converted to the production uh, purchase order right i'll put it here as a purchase order this pr will get converted to the purchase order but before converting this pr to po there is one additional step that planner or capacity uh, sorry uh, procurement guy used to do that where he used to check the vendor capability right vendor uh, capability uh, and uh, current stock situation also right this will be out of system actually uh, that planner is doing so and based on that planner used to take action to convert the plan, uh, purchase requisition to the purchase order right so i'll put this arrow in this fashion okay with the dotted lines okay the same fashion plan order will get converted to the production order for in house manufactured material right i'll put it here as a production order and then the production planner need to check the capacity whether we do have a capacity available right capacity planning if capacity is overloaded for the specific month or specific day planner used to do capacity leveling where planner uh, production planner change the dates or change the production lines manually based on the available capacity and then it actually goes for the actual production right actual so if we see here capacity planning and capacity you know leveling this part this is one of the most critical part for any planner to do it because for a, for a less if we talk about the real example for one specific machine we do have different kind of product and we are putting the demand for all the product here in md61 for the same machine for the same less same month Let's say my machine capacity is to produce a hundred pieces of one specific material. I, I may have a demand for a specific month of let's say ten different product on the same month with hundred hundred pieces. Once you run the MRP system, used to create the plan order for the specific month with the specific product, right? 
So for that specific month, although one product plan order is already running, system used to you know overload the capacity and used to create the uh, plan order for other material also because our planning run, MRP run, is not actually working on the capacity constraint. For that specific month, although one plan order is already there for A material, system used to create some other plan order for B material on the same day on the same machine. So it's altogether if my machine capacity is to produce only hundred, there could be a uh, 100, uh, 100 production order for a different material on the same, uh, you know, same month. So it's actually overloaded. So it's planner job when he is converting that plan order to production order. He need to check the capacity. He need to check the priority of that uh, order or requirement. And based on that, planner can say, okay, for this day, first order should run. And he manually change the date of the second machine uh, material plan on the some other day as per the available capacity. And that is nothing but your capacity planning and capacity leveling. This is much most critical part for any planner to do it, right? Where planner end up with a different issues. The same way when we are, you know, getting a material from different vendors, planner need to check whether vendor has a capability to provide that material. Right. So if we don't have any kind of uh, tool available, we will end up with a, uh, you know, a critical condition where my as per demand system is giving the plan, but it's not actually happening. So we are not able to, you know, fulfill that demand or fulfill the customer requirement. And we will end up with some uh, critical situation. And that is the reason SAP came up with long-term planning solution. Before going to your real planning and real plan order and real purchase requisition, this long-term planning gives us the facility to run the planning at a simulation mode and check the capacity situation as well as my raw material situation, whether there is any capacity overloading in specific month. If yes, planner will get prepared for that and he can manually distribute the capacity plan, uh, capacity for that specific month in the actual planning. That's what our LTP provides. So if you talk about the long-term planning uh, um, uh, process steps, I'll put it here with some different color, okay? I'm putting it with, let's say, okay. How, how we are actually doing the planning, the demand which is there, at our active version, first we need to copy the demand to inactive version by MS64 transaction. I'm saying copy demand to inactive version. Okay, I'm putting this step here. Once we copy the demand, to the inactive version, let's say inactive version could be 0, 0, 0, 0.003 or something. I'm putting here as a 0, 0.3 for the understanding. Okay. Then planner has to create one planning scenario. Okay. Planner has to create planning scenario by MS31. Right. I'll putting here create planning scenario. with version 03 and with the help of this we have we need to run the material requirement planning at a simulation mode that will be ms01 or ms02 that is nothing but mrp simulation Once we run the MRP and the simulation, systems gives us the same way, plan orders and purchase requisition like our real MRP, PR. I'll put it here, plan order for in-house manufactured material, right? And purchase requisition for externally procured material. Okay. 
or external people. This is actually at a simulation mode. These are not the real plan orders or real purchase requisitions, okay? That will be at a simulation mode to check the stock situation and to check the different reports. So basically, with help of this plan order and purchase requisition, planner will get different kind of reports where he can easily go and analyze analyze the reports by different transaction codes and the transaction codes are like uh, ms04 or uh, ms70 or uh, msec what we talked about kspp okay i will put this here so these kind of different reports we will get from the long-term planning and with the help of this report, planner can be able to take a corrective action, correct? Corrective action, for example, change demand or uh, uh, manage the capacity this kind of okay so this is what the output is with the long term planning i'll put this with some and I'll make some understanding with help of this and this we use to run MRP where system gives us the plan orders and purchase requisitions at a simulation mode. These are these PR plan orders and PR are not the real planning. Okay, guys. So that is at a simulation mode where planner will be able to easily get the different kind of reports from the system for the future demand and based on that reports planner can get prepared for the next uh, incoming situations correct critical situation whatever there are for plan orders if planner came to know like we are not able to fulfill the demand for that specific month okay planner will take action to manage an extra machine or extra capacity to produce that for that future month or planner can also see okay this much of capacity that or this much of demand that we anyway cannot fulfill it in that case what planner will do planner will change the demand instead of 1000 it will say okay we will be able to you know uh, supply only 900 so in that case, once you do the change, that will happen at your simulation version or inactive version, that planner need to copy to the active version, right? Once it, the plan come to the active version, I'm saying copy plan to active version. That is, let's say version zero, zero, right? And then we can go with a real MRP run where we will get the capacity constraint, but we know what is the solution for that, right? And planner can take the necessary action and will easily do the capacity planning and capacity leveling. This is what actually happens in long-term planning. So I will put this arrow here. With the dotted line. And with the help of this different kind of reports and planner has taken the action, planner can easily do the capacity planning and capacity leveling. And it will not end up with any kind of, you know, uh, critical situation. So this is the facility that long-term planning uses. But if you look into the whole end-to-end -end process, there are so many things that planner need to do and the reports which is coming out for, with this long-term planning is not that much easy to understand or it's not that much easy to take a, uh, you know, monitor
to take a corrective action based on that. Because if I'm running for multiple materials with multiple different lines, system is giving us uh, so many reports or so many, you know, outputs, um, and it will get a little bit more uh, confused. Also, system here is just giving us the reports, okay? from where planner need to identify the situation. And based on that, planner has to take the right action during his uh, real MRP. Now, to, because of this critical situations or because of this kind of reporting functionality available in LTP, SAP came up with a fresh new planning methodology and that is nothing but your PMRP where we will get the same kind of reporting and same kind of outputs and same kind of things where planner can do easily do the capacity planning and capacity leveling at a one page okay and that is nothing but PMRP where SAP has just came up with only uh, two application here in if you see in the long-term planning we do have so many things that uh, planner need to do. Planner need to copy the demand first to inactive version, then he need to create separate uh, uh, planning scenario, then he need to run separate MRP run for that planning scenario where system gives us the simulation mode uh, at a simulation mode, plan order and purchase equation. And then planner need to monitor all the reports, different kind of reports from where planner is able to take the action, corrective action. But here in long term planning, SAP has came up with only two applications as of now, okay? I'll put this with some different color to understand. The first application is to schedule a PMRP job, okay? PMRP simulation, simulation creation. And this is nothing but a simple MRP job, okay? A simple PMRP job where planner need to run the PMRP simulation, okay? And this will be happening in the background. So no need to plan or to do every day this thing, okay? And based on this job, it will give us different kind of results. So this is nothing but process PMRP simulation. This is the other application where planner will get all the information based on this real demand all the capacity constraint and whatever it planner will get at a single pages a single page where planner can see okay for this specific month there is a high demand and our capacity is low so we are not able to produce if that situation is there system itself propose the solution for that here in a long term planning we are not getting any proposals right but here with this demand um, here we are not copying demand to any inactive version, the same demand we are using for the planning. And then we are getting uh, the results out of that. And here, once we are getting the result, planner will get the solutions for that also. Let's say for a specific month, there is high demand and there is a capacity constraint We are we are overloading the capacity. System itself is giving us the solution. Okay, if we are overloading the capacity in this month, we do have option to do the pre-production. That means we can produce prior to that month so that we will fulfill the demand at a right day, at a right time, right? So system will provide here us a different kind of reports. I'll put it here like this, just a minute. One. So, here with this application, planner will be getting the different solution for that capacity constraint. Either we can do pre-production or second, uh, it will give, okay, if that is the case, we are having other option to change the source of supply, right? That means, if for that specific material, we do have different production line or different production version to manufacture, then it will give the possible solution. If there is a high uh, capacity constraint for that specific one on that specific machine or specific production line, we can change the source of supply. We can change the machine and we can bifurcate the load between one machine to other machine. 
also if that machine is also not available we do have only one production line for that specific uh, material then system will give us the option to change the capacity where we do have 100% capacity with this uh, specific time then system will give us okay we can increase the capacity of that machine so that we can fulfill the demand if that option is also not available then the last option is change demand instead of 1000 we will say okay in this month we will be able to only provide or produce let's say 600 or let's say 700 so that option also system will propose here but this is very last option because once we are changing the demand from 1000 to 800 that means we are reducing our uh, fulfillment uh, ratio or fulfillment uh, you know uh, we are not able to fulfill the requirement for that customer right so these kind of options we will get through this application from that planner will get more prepared and will able to take a necessary action very easily right now guys if planner is coming uh, saying okay for that specific month he's trying to change the demand because he don't have any option available he don't have anything available where uh, um, he can either uh, do the pre-production or change the source of supply or something now there is only one option available let's say that is change the demand okay in that case once planner release this plan okay once planner release this change in demand whatever he has taken the action release the plan this will get updated at release the plan updated at inactive version okay once that plan get less inactive version is uh, 0 3 or something okay i'm putting 0 2 then planner need to copy this plan from inactive version to active version and can go ahead with the real planning hence it will not end up with any capacity constraint because we already changed the requirement but this is this step is only applicable when we are doing the change in demand if not we can do these three different options uh, system is proposing us three different options where we can uh, do pre-production or change the source of supply or change the capacity in that case we no need to copy this plan to the uh, active version right so this is what pmrp propose so if you try to you know compare ltp versus pmrp in ltp we need to do so many things like creating the uh, planning scenario copying the demand from active version to inactive version then separately mrp run then get the different output from that mrp run monitor these outputs right in the different kind of reports because this is not at a one place ms04 is separate transaction code kspp is separate transaction code like that and based on that plan after monitoring planner has to take the right action here okay but in ltp there is only one application available where planner will get all the information in front of him and also a different proposals here planner can easily choose any proposal system will propose okay this much quantity that need to do the pre-production so that there will be no capacity constraint or let's say total requirement demand is 1000 and our manufacturing capacity is only 600 so system will propose that five 400 remaining quantity that we need to allocate to the different production line when we are allocating it to the different production line system will check for that specific production line is there any other production load is already there if yes system will say okay you cannot go to this option you can increase your capacity that's how different kind of proposal system propose here in the, at a one screen where it's very easy for planner to take an action and release the plan in ltp it's not that easy to monitor the things that's what we discussed now guys we will move uh, jump into the system and we will try to run these two different application with different demand and we'll try to see the stock situation and capacity situation we will try to um, use all these options okay to fulfill the demand and to you know uh, do the planning 
before going ahead, I just want to know if you have any kind of question till point. Okay, guys, if you don't have any question, we will jump into the system and we will try to configure the PMRP and where we will run the, these two applications.